to induct Patti Smith into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame from Rage Against the Machine, Zach De La Roca. Good evening. Um, I read an article recently where the author, some critic, had identified the very moment that the Cultural Revolution died, if you can believe that. According to this guy, the spirit passed in the summer of 1969 when violence broke out at a free Rolling Stones concert at the Altamont Speedway. How such a ridiculous conclusion could be drawn escapes me when you consider that the 70s would produce some of the most revolutionary art that the world would ever see. If there was even a grain of truth to what this guy had to say, somebody forgot to tell Patti Smith. <laughs> By the time Amiri Baraka had released the now infamous poem, It's Nation Time, and Marvin Gaye, two years later, released What's Going On, one of the sparks that set the punk prairie fire had left South Jersey for the Lower East Side of Manhattan. In 1975, with Lenny Kay, Ivan Krall, Richard Soul, and J.D. Dowdy, Patti Smith released Horses. The opening to Gloria might be one of the greatest moments in American music. The piano line and the space within it speaks to us like a dark gospel. And then you hear that voice. And you think nothing could be this haunting and nothing could be this healing at the same time. And then the words, Jesus died for someone's sins, but not mine. Delivered like someone who left the church that was repressive America and burned it to the ground. The body of the song becomes a celebration of the outsider and possesses a chaos that only Patty can summon and only she can control. She sings, screams, howls, chants, so attuned to the moment that anticipating the next one is an impossibility. The breath between her words is as powerful as the words themselves. And by the end of the song, a couple of things were made apparent. Punk seeds had been planted, the culture would be changed forever, and it would be hard for me to ever listen to Van Morrison again. <laughs> In 1976, Patty released Radio Ethiopia. The songs, a little more refined but still daring, and still carry that outsider's dignity. In 1978, she released Easter, where along with Bruce Springsteen co-wrote, she would have her first hit with Because the Night. But Patty's spirit ultimately proved too restless for radio and far too threatening. She seemed far more interested in creating transcendent poetic moments than fashionable hits because she had already carved her legacy in something much deeper. The movement she helped define explained why people like me related more to the bad brains than we did to the eagles, why we championed the clash and hated Ronald Reagan, and why, and why we dropped our textbooks and picked up Sonia Sanchez, Allen Ginsberg, and Langston Hughes. Expanding rock's boundaries, Patti Smith, the poet, revealed truth regardless of the political and social consequences. Patti once said, I stand in front of a microphone and I'm not afraid. And she remains just that, fearless. Fearless throughout her losses, fearless as a mother, fearless when she put the Bush administration up on the firing line for this illegal war and pulled her poetic trigger. Fearless in prose and fearless in her life, 
it is my honor and privilege to induct Patti Smith into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank you.